Hoyes Lloyd was born in 1824, New Glasgow, Lower Canada. Little is recorded of his life before 1854, when at age 30, he earned a BA at the University of Rochester in New York. In 1855, he became the first pastor of First Baptist Church in Port Hope, Ontario, which in June of that year joined the Haldimand Association. For two weeks in October of that same year, Deacons William Craig and Robert Morton covered for the pastor so that he could travel to Beamsville for his wedding to Cecilia Moore. The couple ministered in Port Hope for four years, during which their eldest daughters, Jessie and Hattie, were born. In 1860, they left Port Hope to pastor Whitby Baptist Church, which was restarting after a five-year hiatus. Their log chapel had been destroyed by a storm, and now they were building again. Hoyes Lloyd was their first pastor in this new season. In 1861, he received his master's degree from Rochester, completing his formal education. He also that year began to work with R.A. Fife to establish the Baptist College in Woodstock. And while in Whitby, the Lloyd family grew by two. Henry and Sophia were born. Leaving Whitby for Toronto in 1863, Lloyd began what is arguably his greatest ministry challenge and his greatest ministry success, the role of proprietor and editor of the Canadian Baptist Journal, taking it on when it was close to bankruptcy. Lloyd had no publishing experience, but he had been a contributor to the magazine as far back as 1840, when at the age of 16, he challenged and debated other Baptist writers. As editor himself, he ignored events like Canada's Confederation and the American Civil War and Lincoln's assassination. He focused instead entirely on Christian life and doctrine, even taking Charles Haddon Spurgeon to task over the question of open communion. Lloyd passionately promoted missions. He served on the inaugural committees of the French Regular Baptist Missionary Society, the Canada Auxiliary to the American Baptist Missionary Union, and the Regular Baptist Foreign Society of Canada, again working with William Craig of Port Hope. These committees helped to launch and support the work of respected Baptist missionaries like William's son, John Craig, and his wife, Ada, as well as Americus and Jane Timpany, and John and Mary McLaurin. Lloyd worked hard to financially stabilize the Canadian Baptist magazine. For example, in 1868, he returned to his old stomping grounds, the Haldeman Association, to encourage subscriptions and to recruit opposition to a new tax on imported Bibles. During the Canadian Baptist years, he was also the interim founding pastor of Alexander Street Baptist in Toronto. He opened the Baptist book room, a bookstore, and he compiled a hymn book. In 1870, Cecilia and Hoy's youngest child, Frank, was born. In early 1871, Lloyd resigned from the Canadian Baptist. It was no longer in danger, but his own health had become too poor to continue. Later that year, his four-year-old son, Tracy, died. In 1872, Lloyd had recovered sufficiently to be the founding pastor of College Street Baptist until his health failed him again. In 1875, he recovered enough to work for Quebec's Grandling Mission, combining his love of missions and his love of his home province, but again in 1876 he retired because of poor health, and that year his youngest daughter Sophia died at age 14. In 1877, Hoyes Lloyd was listed in the Baptist yearbook as Minister Without Pastoral Charge and as Agent Grand Lean Mission. On June 7 of that year, 
he died. Decades later, after the death of missionary John McLaurin, an old notebook was found among his papers. It contained a short list of people whom McLaurin considered sacred names, and one of those names was Reverend Lloyd. Hoyes Lloyd was a man who seems to have fit a lifetime's work into 20 years, from age 31 to age 52. He ministered in the Baptist Church. He established four congregations. He helped inaugurate half a dozen missions boards and a school. He supported uncounted missionaries. He raised children who continued in the Baptist Church. And he exemplified denominational journalism for future generations. 